Today I'm glad to talk about zone emulation support for QMU. First of all, I'd express my gratitude to Damien, Stefan, Dimitri, Harness for their guidance and support. Uh, I've gained um, a lot in the QMU community as well. First, let's look at the state of zone storage in QMU. As you may know, the zone storage um, concepts are standardized as ZBC, ZAC, and ZNS protocols. The virtual protocol for block devices should also be aware of the zone devices instead of taking them as regular ones. It should pass such devices to the guest. Zone block devices on Linux can be exposed to VM via virtual SCSI or virtual block emulation. It can, uh, you can attach a zone device to QMU um, via virtual SCSI or you can attach a zone device or a QCOT image file to QMU via virtual block emulation. There are not much difference between virtual SCSI or virtual block emulation, except that zone append emulation is done by the guest kernel, the guest kernel SCSI disk driver for virtual SCSI, while while virtual block emulation um, emulates appendized for virtual block. Um, QMU also has its own MME device emulation with ZNS support. It can be used for development of kernel features. You can also attach um, physical PCI adapters can also be attached to VMs if you don't want QMU emulation involved. Um, let's play with the emulate the zone device a bit and see how to store files to a zone storage using better FS on a QMU VM. First, let's make sure the environment is ready. QMU supports zone device emulation since version 8.1. The, su the suggested version um, for Linux is above version 6.3. Secondly, um, create a zone block device on the host and boot a VM. Mm, then you can check. Then you can check if the zone device in the in the guest through the kernel logs or just use ls block dash z. Mm, from the picture on the right, you can see there is a zone device called VDA, which is hosted and managed mm, with 12 zones. If you want to store files to a zone storage using BetterFS on a QM VM. It's pretty, um, it's pretty much like um, doing that in the host. First, to create a better FS file system with VDB device and then mount it under the MNT directory. Then create uh, um, a sub volume and move the text file there. You can check if the file persists by shutting down the VM and restarting it again. The same text file will be there if the device is, is remounted. Mm, then let's look at uh, mm, the command line details for setting, mm, for setting up the environment. There are two block backends you can pick from. Um, the first one is now block devices. And by, spe by specifying the zone option to one, you create a very simple, now um, a very simple zone devices. You can also use the scripts on the zone storage sites to create a zone device with with more options like a number of zones or zone size. And likewise, you can also create a QCOT file with zone format. Mm, with a few more zone options like max open zone or max open bytes.
to expose the zone block device on the host through virtual block. You should configure the driver to host the device and enable the direct cache option. This is necessary because the kernel page cache um, doesn't guarantee the um, sequential write constraints which is required for the SWR zones. Um, if the risk condition arises, it's likely um, to disrupt the original order of page writes. Um, similarly, to expose the QQ2 file with zone format through virtual block, um, you can use the command line um, as, as follows. So d didn't we force to on the cache direct option in the case of a zone block device? Was wh wh why do we still need to s to specify it? It should be it should be on by default to avoid the user making the mistake. Essentially. Oh, is, oh, is that so? Stefan, do you remember? Do we have that? Uh, I, I don't remember. We I, should really. Or we should really I or error out if it's not uh, turned on. I think there will be a warning if you don't set the direct cache, but... Uh, no, but in that case, for example, uh, it has to be on, otherwise you're going to see reordering and it's not going to work for the user. Yes. So we have to prevent that. Yes. For developers who want to um, contribute to zone emulation, can we... Um, there are some tools I find useful for testing and debugging. Mm, QMUIO can run zone commands using new block layer APIs. You can also use the QMUIO tests called zone to check the overall functionality of zone operations. If the QMUIO test pass, mm, pa passed, you can move on to the guest machine to where where ZoneFS tools will run a more thorough test on the zone operations of a zone file system with the attached block device. Um, FIO and block tests um, are optional to run if the ZoneFS tools tests um, are pass um, passed. Um, if if you if you want to issue a single request at a time, you can also use DD or block zone commands. Um, the debugging tools are common ones, as you know. Um, you can use address sanitizer or Valgorand for memory errors, or um, if you VM crashes or QM crashes, you can use the core dump, core dump control tools with GDB to see the backtrace. F-trace, block trace, and S-trace are also very nice tools to find the root cause of the issues. Unlike device pass-through, virtual block emulation Mm, hides the device types um, and adds more flexibility. Storage, the storage controller emulation uses the new block layer APIs instead of directly accessing the disk image. The zone, sto mm, the zone storage APIs support, support um, zone models and four zone management commands and also append zone.
Q the QMU block layer has a block driver state graph which propagates the device information um, to the virtual block device. Uh, when virtual block device receives the block driver state, it will send uh, the zone feature bit to the virtual block driver. The, vert blo the virtual block driver will recognize the zone device. When the guest OS runs the zone commands, and the virtual block driver um, will issue the requests which will be captured by virtual block device on QMU. Then it sends the request down to the file POSIX driver where um, it uh, performs the zone operations using Linux IO controls. Um, there's work in progress to, um, to support uh, uh, to support emulate, emulating zones in the QCAL2 file for testing and bring up. The, f the full emulation um, support is useful for developers um, who want to access a zone device environment without real zone hardware. Um, it has a easy it has a easy zone storage setup and um, and provides persistence um, to, to to the metadata. Uh, from the picture, it's uh, it's the structure of in-memory data buffer when a QCAL2 file is attached to QMU as uh, a ZNS drive. The zone, the zone, uh, the zone descriptor extension data is host defined data that is associated with each zone. We also need to t um, think about uh, um, maintaining the zone states and guarantee the zone metadata persistence. Um, as the layout of disk image shows, the metadata of QCAL2 driver is put to the end of the file. The red pointers and header will also be stored at the end of the disk image. The size of zone descriptor extension data of each zone is relative, relatively small comparing to the overall size of the disk image. Therefore, we store the zone, zone descriptor extension data of all zones of the device to the, same, to the one place. The zone state the zone state machine depicts, depicts zone state transitions and zone resources. The read-only and offline states are device internal states, which will be ignored in full emulation for, simple, for simplicity. Mm, the, the other states are empty, open, closed, and full.
Sorry, guys, just to look at my scripts I've written before. If the gas OQM crashes, the zone states are needed to recover. In real devices, open states will be lost and turn into closed state after a power cycle. Mm. The red point array is composed of unsigned 64-bit integers, allowing space to store zone information like zone states. When considering Mm, to store zone states or not, it turns out in memory states are good enough without extra cost on state assignment to write pointers and write and writing back to disk when the state is update, uh, when the state is updated. The reason is that QCAL2 keeps track of open zones using doubly linked lists. When reading the state of the zone, it will first check if the zone is in each zone list and check writing pointer and check write pointer when finding none. The calculation is straightforward. When the write pointer value is equal to the offset of that zone, the zone state is empty. When the write pointer value is equal to the offset plus the zone size, the zone state is full. Since we can induce the empty and full states on open and, and open zones are tracked in memory, the zone left will be in the closed states. Another kind of in-memory state is zone resources. It has, it has open and active zone limits which affect zone operations. Write requests on zones no longer execute when any one of the zone limits is over. If there's room left for active zones, the device can implicitly close one zone to avoid exceeding open zone limits. There's also work in progress to support NVMe ZNS, which currently only offers volatile zone states and is not suitable for product for running production VMs yet. There have been several approaches to persistence when ZNS emulation was introduced to QMU. One is to use separate MMAP file. However, the QMU block layer does not support MMAP. A block driver state may not have a file descriptor that can be mapped. Another way is to add a separate block device which is more suitable with the QCAL2 zone support. QCAL2 is better than RAW for its popularity in virtual image format. That's why we add the full emulation to QCAL2 driver instead of creating another zone format driver. By taking advantage of new block layer APIs and the QCAL2 image as backing file, we only need to care about the ZNS specific me metadata such as zone attributes. When the direct memory access flag is set for NVMe device, the zone open requests are required to handle memory mapping first. NVMe device internal memory stores data directly from the guest depending on where the IOQs are stored, host or NVMe device. Normally, the guest address will be translated to host address, but if it's direct memory access, the guest cannot map the address and will trigger a bounce buffer. The host will trap it and ask him if, MV, if NVMe device knows about it. Only one bounce buffer in flight is trapped. In the end, we'll discuss one of zone attributes shortly. The zone random write area is a legacy bit for adaption. The valid bit for ZRWA is only in runtime. The old drives do not support sequential sequential write constraints and set this bit to valid. All writes to 
zone random right area must be persistent while the right pointer is not advanced immediately. Um, finally, what have been made so far um, is the zone storage APIs are added to QAMU block layer. The zone storage support is implemented in Vertile block emulation. Adding full zone emulation to the QQ2 driver and persistence to NVMe ZNS emulation are in review. To complete the zone storage picture in QMU, there is also work to be done, such as adding full emulation to Vertile SCSI. Um, and now with this summary slide listing, um, listing what I have contributed, um, my talk is concluded. Hope it's survived. It work? Okay. So I have simple question because I was confused. Uh, slide something like QCAO to format or something. Because uh, zone usually is bigger than physical sector. But uh, I see something like our data sector is smaller than zone. Is it true or maybe I'm missing something here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so data sector is a physical sector. Usually smaller like zone in size because zone is bigger usually. So is it uh, correct or what I'm missing here? Mm. Uh, this data... Mm. The data sector here is... Uh, mm, is just... Uh, uh, Mm, a part that uh, I named for this chunk, not not uh, the actual sector. It's not an on-disk sector. Mm. Sorry. It's not an on one. It's not a single on-disk sector. Yeah. 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 Does that answer the question? Okay. Um, uh, and I just have a, like a general question. So um, now we're getting QCow support with states and everything. Uh, do we have a way yet to like dump out a drive state and load it into QMU for debugging purposes? Uh, we should be able to write a tool that does that, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's in the Qcore image. image, you only need to read that file and look at the metadata at the end. So, yeah, but we don't have yet. well, no, but that would be trivial to do. But having that would be really cool for debugging like weird file system corruptions and so on. You can just dump an image and load it into QMU. So that's, this is really nice work. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs> no, thanks a lot. Thank